Knowing how this kind of love is a self-sacrificing love. Right. It is literally an unconditional love. This kind of love causes the husband to take care of his wife to such a degree uh -huh. that he's willing to lay down his life for her. Right. If death is the means by which she can be saved and spare the grief and heartache that she would have suffered, uh -huh. then he'll gladly lay down his life for her life. Right. God wants you to agape her. God wants you to love her unconditionally. Yes. Don't put conditions on your love for her. Don't love her because she's cooking your meat. Hello in here. Don't love her because she doing your laundry. Right, Are y'all here? Right, yes, Don't love her because she does what you tell her to do. Love her in spite of these things. This is the kind of love that Jesus had for the church. The Lord didn't die to save himself. Right. He gave up his life so that we could save our lives. My friends, that's love. that's love. This is the kind of love that God is looking for husbands to have for their wives. It literally says, if my death ends up being life for you, then I'll gladly and willingly give up my life in order to help save your life. This is the standard. My brother, and this is literally the degree that God expects you to love your wife. Mm -hmm. Because you are her head, you are obligated to do whatever it takes to make sure that your wife is safe and secure. It was never ever in God's will for a husband to mistreat his wife. It was never ever in God's will for you to be her dad in the sense that when she don't do what you said do, you put your hands on her as you would a disobedient child. She's not your child. She's your spouse. And God said you are to love her like you love yourself. Y'all all right? I got to make sure you're all right right here. Because we're going deeper from here. Y'all all right? I don't want to step down till you're at it. Bro. This is just the surface here. The Bible goes on to explain to you why God intends for you to love her like Christ loved the church. Which is the reason why we're asking, why does God require this type of self-sacrificing love that Christ displayed for the church? Why wouldn't God just be satisfied in me loving her like a member of my family? Why wouldn't God just be satisfied with me loving her as if she was my best friend? Why wouldn't God be satisfied? Would be loving her intimately because God knows she deserves better than that. Are y'all here? My brother, you owe her this. The mere fact that you're her head does not mean that you have a dominant, uh, absolute rule and reign and sovereign over her to the extent that you don't show her any type of love, care, compassion, and concern. She's not just here to be up under your iron fist. Yes, she is to submit. We went over that last week. Amen. Didn't we, sisters? Amen. I, I taught you last week, didn't I? You got to submit to him because in submitting to him, you submit to the Lord. Now, the way the Lord helps you, the way the Lord helps you adequately to submit is because he teaches the man to which you must submit how to love you. 
to such a decree that you want to submit. Amen and hell. I had one beautiful sister come back there last week said, you make me want to go find a man to submit to. <laughs> Amen. And hey, I said, go ahead, sister. <laughs> you got the lesson. You understood the message here. It was so good to her. She wanted to be up under submission to somebody. <laughs> See, when the man, when the man loves you to that degree, yes. it makes it easy yes. for you to submit. You don't mind calling him daddy. <laughs> Y'all hear? Yeah, so allow me a moment to teach the man how to love you. Because let's be honest here. That's right. We didn't see this kind of love from daddy toward mom. We didn't see this kind of love toward granddaddy, toward grandma. We didn't see this kind of love toward great granddad, toward great grandma. During the, the, the culture and the times from which we have come, we saw the men out there working hard, yeah. laboring, being what they had to be in a society that was trying to make them be less than what they were created to be. Amen. They were dealing with trouble on the outside. Amen. They were dealing with adversity. And all they wanted to do was be a man. And take care of their family. And so the taking care of the family literally came to financial standpoints. And that's what some men say. Well, I pay all the bills. Uh -huh. Don't I, I put a roof over your head? <laughs> you driving away. What you complaining about? Girl, I ain't never here. No, because I'm working. Don't you enjoy what you eat on the weekend? <laughs> Hello in here? Y'all 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 understand? Hello? <laughs> This thing on? Yeah, that's the mentality. And it's been, it's been instilled in black men that you gotta work hard and provide for your family. I agree with that wholeheartedly. But a part of your provision for your family is showing this woman how valuable she is to you. Out of all the other fish in the sea, out of all the whales in the ocean, out of all the jellyfish in the pond, God gave me, gave you to me. Hello again. God gave you to me for a reason. And it wasn't for me to treat you like a piece of property. Y'all not right. Yes, sir. Notice in Ephesians chapter 5, mm -hmm. beginning at verse number 28, that the Lord not only shows us through this discourse that the kind of love a man ought to have for a woman is to be self-sacrificing love, but it is also to be a selfless love. In other words, this kind of love is not selfish because selfishness would cause the husband to think only about himself. And when a man thinks only about himself, he treats you as if you're something less than what you are. That's the reason some of our sisters are being treated as less than what they are because the man thinks only about himself. Obviously, he can't be a godly man and think only about himself because in Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse number 28, the Bible commands me to love you as myself, which literally means whatever I do for me, I got to do the same thing for you. Y'all all right? Look at it with me, if you will, Ephesians 5. And beginning in verse number 28. So all men to love their wives as their own body. Y'all hear that? If I'm going to get my toes done, her toes ought to be done too. Hello, dear. If I'm getting my manicure, she ought to have a manicure too. All right, Even if I don't see the need to do that for myself, 
to keep her beautified, to keep her looking. 